Hey, Coach. Uh, talk a little, you know, Jafar and Tony have, will stand out. What have the other three guys done to warrant uh, work with the number one unit? Yeah, I think the great thing for us in the running back room right now is our depth. I think that we have multiple guys who can play uh, winning football and help this football team. I think that all guys have contributed in different ways. You know, it's hard to say what each one of those three guys, those other three guys have done, but they've made enough plays when they've had opportunities to say, hey, these guys can help us uh, play winning football. But uh, Jafar and Tony are going to be the, your breadwinners this, this fall, you think? And what, what, what do they do uh, well, and how do they complement each other? Yeah, you know, I think that that's um, the great thing is, is we have multiple backs who can play um, and, and give us, um, they have different strengths, you know, both of them. I think they are very complimentary. They do things differently, you know, and do, do things well differently. Um, you know, Jafar, his background as a receiver, you know, the way that he runs routes, the way that he, you know, catches the football, his explosiveness and long speed has, has been really great. And then Tony is, you know, his, his veteran leadership has been great in the room. You know, he's got a great instincts and feel as a runner, which has been great. Um, I think he sees the game really well. He's been in the system for a while now. He knows the offense better than anybody in our room. And I think that, that really helps him. You know, and then when you look at the young guys, you know, Jameer, Sebo, Kyron, all of those guys have taken turns uh, making plays when the football has found them. And so that's been exciting. And that's been, you know, uh, one of the things that we've stressed as an offense and especially in our room is the explosive playmaking ability, uh, the ability to win one on one matchups, you know, um, run through arm tackles, finish in the end zone. And all of those guys have really done that really well. Yeah, Coach, as a guy who grew up with, with Alabama's program, what has it been like for you personally to, to be here? Is it, is it somewhat similar given the, you know, the tradition, the expectations, that sort of thing? You know what, Notre Dame is a really special place. And I felt that when I came here uh, on my interview, you know, it, it really felt like home to me. You know, and what I mean by that is, is growing up in Alabama and having such a great respect for, you know, Alabama football and Bear Bryant and the history and tradition. I felt those same things when I came to campus here, you know, when you walk and you see the Heisman trophies and the national championship trophies. And, you know, even growing up in Alabama, there's a great respect for the program that is Notre Dame, you know. And so I felt that here. And I just felt like it really fit my uh, belief system. It really felt, fit who I was. To me, it was a great combination of a couple of different places that I've been. It really was a great combination of I've been at Stanford where, with high academic excellence and then also, you know, great winning football tradition, you know, uh, with places that I've been, you know, Alabama and, and Stanford. And so I've been <clears throat> fortunate to uh, be at some great places. In terms of recruiting, do you feel like that tradition still you know, resounds with kids the same way it would have maybe when you were a player? Absolutely. Um, I think that there are so many things that are special about this place and unique. Um, I think that what you see we're doing on the recruiting trail now, um, once you can get recruits on campus here and, and really show what Notre Dame has to offer on and off the field, um, football and in the classroom, you know, really it's a total package. To me, it, it's, it's something that unique that not many people in the country have to sell. And to me, we're doing a great job of that in recruiting, selling that. And, you know, I think kids are buying into it. You've had a great history with running backs, catching the ball, whether it was with uh, Christian McCaffrey or others. And you've coached in the NFL with receivers specifically. Yes. How much of that aspect in your teachings is carrying over and maybe being emphasized even more so in the offense right now? Yeah, you know, I think it's it's pretty unique for me um, having a background in both as a player. I was I played running back and I played receiver. And as a coach, I primarily coach running backs and receivers. And so <laughs> I think that gives me a foundation of being able to, uh, a little bit of balance to be able to coach both, you know, the running backs uh, as, you know, runners, but also as pass catchers, you know, be able to give them a little bit more in terms of, you know, coverage recognition, but also route running skills, you know, uh, press release 
release techniques, those type of things. And so, you know, the neat thing for me is, is I've had backs that have had skill sets who have really been accentuated in the past game, which has helped, you know. Uh, but I'll, I also think that my background has, has helped accentuate some of those, you know, skill sets in those guys. You know, just like at Stanford, um, they were used to having big backs, you know, Toby Gearhart and, um, you know, some of the big, big pounding bruisers that they've had. And then, you know, we had guys like Christian McCaffrey and Bryce Love, you know, but um, I think it's also the guys that we've, we've had. And we've got a, you know, great group of backs in, in the room now who really have done a nice job in the run and pass game. You've been around coaching royalty all your life there. I think your father played for Bear Bryant yes, as well. You, your coach, position coach was Dabo Sweeney, Correct. I believe. And just when you've been around that, what do you take from each that you're able to apply? And I mean, could you have envisioned Dabo being where he is now? Okay. Yes, you know, to, to see Dabo where he is, I mean, honestly, he's the same guy today that he was, you know, as a position coach when I, when I played at Alabama, you know. Um, humble, uh, very likable, very, um, you know, personable. Uh, always wanting the best for everybody in the room, you know, even, even you know, me as a, as a freshman, you know, when I came in the room, you know, he really took to me and, you know, it was like I, I saw him, you know, when, when Christian was a finalist for the Heisman, I see him in New York and he, he comes up and he gives me a big hug, like, you know, um, you know, like we're still best friends. And, you know, he's been a great mentor to me. He's kept in touch with me. Uh, but I have been very fortunate to work at some great programs and be around some unbelievable coaches, you know, uh, and I really feel fortunate. Sometimes I have to pinch myself when I think about the great people that I've been exposed to, you know, and it's kind of like Tommy Coach Reese said, you know, you've tried to learn and take a little bit from, from everybody that you've been around. I mean, from Dabo Sweeney to Coach Saban to, you know, Rex Ryan to, you know, Jerry Moore at App State, who's, you know, a Hall of Famer. And, you know, now to be on this staff with Coach Kelly, who's, you know, a, a great coach, and I'm still learning. And to me, that's how you continue to get better when you're in this profession, you know, or whatever avenue in life, you should be continue, continually and constantly trying to improve yourself. And the one thing about coaching is, is it, just like being a player, it's super competitive. And if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. And so, you know, every day, you know, you, tr you try to challenge yourself. But I have been around some great coaches, and you just try to, t you know, I try to take as many notes as I can. You know, I try to review those notes. You know, I could probably write a book from all the coaches that I've been around, all the things that I've seen, even in my short time, you know, a as a young coach. Uh, but I feel super blessed and fortunate to have been the places that I've been and work with the guys that I've been able to work with. Lance, here to your left, you had the opportunity to begin coaching Kyron Williams in the spring. It sounds like from everything we've heard, he's a very mature kid. What have you found to be the, the mental aspect of his game? Yeah, you know, Kyron is, he's very conscientious. That's the one word I would use. Football is important to him, you know. He's constantly asking the right questions. He wants to be good at it, and he works at it, you can tell. Everything that I say, he writes down, um, even on the field, you know, uh, you, you'll tell him once and he, and he makes the correction. You know, he's not what I call a repeat offender. You know, he's a guy who makes a mistake once, you correct him, and then he comes back and he corrects that mistake himself, you know, and so that's that's been great to see. You know, obviously it helped him being here, you know, as an early enrollee. I think that put him, you know, miles ahead of the game in terms of where he is right now as opposed to where he would have been if he just started. And so, you know, I think his makeup and build is a testament to where he is right now and the ability that he's been able to, to use. But he's smart, hardworking, he's tough, he works at it. Football is important to him. C coaches will say about a young player that the moment won't be too big. Does he fall into that category? Absolutely. I mean, honestly, the bigger the moment that I, I found with him, the bigger the moment, the more he rises to the occasion, you know, in, in terms of, you know, you want guys to practice like they're going to play on Saturdays, and that's the way that he practices. But every time that we've gone into, you know, a scrimmage type situation or one, you know, good, good on good, or we've asked him to do something, you know, in a scrimmage situation where, hey, you're going to be highlighted on this play, he's stepped up and made a play. And so th those are the things that you like to see from young guys. You, you've inserted him into the slot. Did he arrive as a nat natural pass catcher, or have you used your area of expert expertise there to, to bring him along? 
I wish I could take credit. Um, he's done a really nice job. His background as a receiver, he early on in high school, he played receiver, you know, mostly receiver before he really transitioned to full-time running back. I really believe that time in, in high school has really helped him. He's really got a natural feel uh, as a pass catcher, you know, and that's one of the things in the pass game, especially with running backs. Some guys have a natural, you know, knack for it, so to speak, um, as a route runner, as a pass catcher. They have great ball skills and instincts. He's one of those guys, you know, and, and uh, Jafar does as well, but also, you know, Tony is a great pass catcher out of the backfield. Thank you. Yes. Lance, uh, I think it's been three and a half, three plus seasons since the Notre Dame running back has lost a fumble. Uh, it's a pretty amazing streak, maybe luck driven as well. But is that something that you bring up as a point of pride? Do you remind I see all the drills that you have and the ball security aspect of it? Or is that something that's better left unsaid? <laughs> well, it's too late now. You said it. Um, thanks for that. I'll um, contact you, you know, hopefully in a couple of years. But uh, no, it is, you know, first of all, ball security is job security. Um, you know, and we always start our meetings, every meeting and um, every drill, uh, our drill progression starts with ball security. And so that's the first fundamental, you know, uh, technique that we work on. It's the first drill that we work on. Uh, you obviously make it a point of emphasis, you know, that we started in spring and there again, you know, it's one of the things that we work every single day. Um, we have brought up this, this streak, you know, it, it is an incredible streak. It, it really is. And the guys in the room take pride in that and they should, you know, and, and I want them to continue to take pride and I want us to be able to continue that streak, you know. Uh, and so we're, we, we are going to continue to um, carry the football in the right way. Um, and we continue to highlight those times when we don't, we put the ball in jeopardy. You know, we had a uh, fumble in the spring game, you know, and you, you, you highlight those situations. You constantly bring them, you know, as a point of focus in the room. And I think guys have done a great job. You know, a quick little side story. You know, they were taking pictures this summer for some of the production stuff. And one of the, you know, um, guys asked him, said, hey, you know, can you hold the ball like this for one of the cool shots? And he was like, no, Coach Taylor wouldn't appreciate that. That's not great ball security. So I appreciated that even when they're taking pictures, you know, they're very cognizant of how they hold the football and things that we talk about in the room. And they've done a great job of that. You know, a couple of things that we've talked about in our room is attention to detail, you know, process over outcome, focusing on getting better 1% every every day, you know, making yourself the best version of yourself. And the guys have really um, taken ownership of that. You know, and, and I appreciate our group. I've got I've got a great group of guys that I love coming to work and coaching every single day. They try to do everything that we ask them to do. They work hard. Uh, they want to be great. Um, they really have bought in, and, and I really appreciate the guys that I get to coach every day. It's really been it's made my job fun every day.